Well, the thing is, uh, this is a very unique district, and obviously it comprises of the suburbs uh, where, where I went to school in Canfield, uh, but also it has a rural component. And that rural component enc encompasses areas like Beloit, where my family's farm is. And so it's important to be from this district to know exactly what we need and the uniqueness that we bring to the table. And additionally to that, I'm also an attorney. And as an attorney, you, uh, you, you got to understand legislation, understand it, interpret it, and to be able to draft it as a legislator. And that really aids and helps that. And moreover, I'm also the chief operating officer for the only infectious disease medical practice here in the Tri-County area. That means every COVID case has gone through my office. And in that process, I've, I'm familiar with the pandemic, I'm familiar with COVID-19, but more importantly, I'm very familiar with healthcare. And also, having a, being a chief operating officer, I understand the business aspect, the budgeting, the things that are so crucial as a legislator. I believe that my combination of experience and education makes me the right person for this job. In my time, I have been a roofer, I've been a cabinet maker, I've been a landscaper. I graduated from the fire academy and EMT school. I actually worked as an EMT on the night shift on an ambulance and I went to school during the day. That's how I finished my bachelor's degree. I have been a tour guide to DC. I have written part of the state textbook for the historical society and participated in national endowment for the humanities programs. And I am a teacher and I have been the vice president of operations for a statewide business and I own my own publishing company and I am the author of five children's books. So. When you're talking about safety services or public service or business or labor, I'm the candidate that embodies all of those qualities and I think I'll be able to best serve the people of our district. Um, no, I don't think so. I think that, you know, I just turned 40 in May, so I am old enough where I have some wisdom and experience under my belt, but I still feel young enough, despite being tired with having four kids, that I'm able to get out there and use my energy and vitality to get real work done that we need so desperately in this state. Well, I don't quite consider myself a politician just yet, but, uh, but yes, I am 31 years old, and, uh, but in that short period of time, I managed to uh, not only become an attorney and a practicing attorney, but I'm also a, a chief operating officer. And one thing that I constantly keep hearing from different people uh, is that it's a breath of fresh air to have somebody new and excited to go down to Columbus and bring back good, solid legislation here to the Valley. And uh, they said it's, uh, it's, it's somebody that has, um, uh, somebody who has so much potential and it's exciting. And so uh, I would say to answer your question, no, it's not a disadvantage, but rather an advantage for the Valley to have somebody who's gonna go down there and bring a unique perspective and um, have uh, fresh eyes and clean hands. Yeah, so that's a really excellent question. Well, it's, it's really gonna all stem from the byproducts of COVID-19. See, the pandemic is gonna leave us with economic issues, uh, job loss, and we're gonna need to address those. And another byproduct that I also wanna address is the, um, the opioid crisis and the substance abuse. And these are good things that are lingering on that are the byproduct of COVID-19. And going into uh, 2021, I wanna make sure that we can address those. And then ultimately it's funding. Funding is something that's um, always a crucial thing and it, it helps with our, uh, with our schools, with our roads. And I wanna make sure that uh, we have proper funding going forward as uh, funding is gonna be difficult given the, uh, the economy shutdown. We have a lot of challenges facing our district but I think one of the biggest ones is making sure that our local governments, and local cities in our district get the money they need from the state. Since the Casey administration alone, our local governments have lost $9 billion. They lose a billion dollars every single year from the LLC loophole. And so being able to fund our police and our fire and our roads and our schools, they're in real trouble right now. If you wanna know why you have to pay for an ambulance ride to the hospital, it's because local governments are just drowning out here. They are losing the money from the state. So we have to fix our tax policies so our local governments can have the money they need to fund the vital services that we all deserve. If I'm elected, the very first thing I wanna do is start repealing House Bill 6. It's the most corrupt piece of legislation ever perpetrated against the people of Ohio. And all of our electric bills are going to be skyrocketing now because of it. And it was put through by the most corrupt politician in our state history. I think that is a place we can start because not only does that uh, 
save us money on our electric bills and it gets rid of bad policy. You know, we pay $100 million a year to a coal burning power plant in Indiana um, with that bill. But it also rolled back the clean energy standards, which takes us out of the 21st century economy. Because of that bill, this valley lost a factory that was going to give 1,200 union jobs. We need to start by repealing that and looking towards the future here in the valley. Yeah, the very first thing I want to do is make sure that I go down there and bring back as much funding as possible. And uh, I want to continue doing what I've done so far, which is uh, get funding. Bring, I brought back hundreds of thousands. I brought back uh, um, hundreds of thousands of dollars back here to the area, and uh, specifically for um, for the schools, both uh, local schools, universities. And uh, recently, I, I had just written a, a letter of support, and that support uh, is, is had the opportunity to bring back uh, some some funding for education on opioid crisis for, for teachers, for the awareness of it. And so I want to go down there and continue to bring funding back. And it's going to be a challenge, but we're going to be able to do it through good, smart legislation. And uh, as a chief operating officer, I'm, I'm used to the uh, the struggles of funding and to be able to, to work through that and navigate through there. And I'm going to continue to do that uh, and, and address that challenge. I'm glad you asked that question, and um, I'm going to take a moment to, uh, to really clear the air. Uh, my opponent has run nothing more than a slander campaign against myself, against me, and he's, um, he's attacked me on social media, he's uh, through Facebook, through Twitter, and has gone so far as to have his campaign reach out to people that are close to me via text message and, and speak, lie, speak lies and mistruths and be dishonest. He's gone so far as to call me corrupt Katrona, which is ridiculous. I, I was in office for less than two months when a scandal broke out, and I was one of the first legislators to come out and speak against corruption. I was one of the first legislators to co-sponsor the repeal of House Bill 6, the very bill that he's trying to link me to, which I wasn't even in office at the time. And he keeps spreading out these, these, uh, these lies, and, and he's gone so far as to continue on and say that, that, uh, that I passed out all these, these mailers, which he knows this came from the state party and not from my campaign. And the final thing, too, is that he's gone on to say that I, I purchased my seat uh, from Columbus. I wrote a letter saying that I was going to self-fund my campaign because at the time when I wrote that, we were at the peak of the pandemic. We had people that were struggling. We didn't know what fundraising was going to look like. And I wanted to make sure that I took the stress off the community. And that money's not in Columbus. That money's right here around the corner from where we're standing right now in a local bank. And he's uh, continued to, uh, to, to further on with these, uh, these, these lies and mistruths. And, and the biggest thing I want to make clear is that if, this, if my opponent is willing to lie and, and, and tell mistruths to the voters now just for self-gain, Imagine, for, to, to try to win this race, imagine what he would do if he was down in Columbus. I mean, when is enough enough? And, uh, I, I, you know, and maybe these tactics work for uh, somebody who's down in Columbus, who's from Columbus, where he's from. But right here in the valley, where I'm from, we could read through these lies. We could read through these mistruths and this dishonesty. And uh, the voters aren't going to stand for it because they're going to read through it. You've got to get up early to try to pull the wolves over somebody from the valley. And the voters are going to do that and, and cast their votes accordingly because they're going to see that, that these are nothing more than just him trying to, try to lie and, and try to, try to, try to, try to mis, misinterpret every aspect of it to, uh, to my constituents. So uh, I just wanted to clear the air on that. So I appreciate you asking that question. It's, it's, um, it's really uh, distasteful that he's in, uh, into this mudslinging campaign. Um, I just, uh, we deserve better. Sure. I think um, something that hasn't been highlighted is just the vast amount of experience I bring to the table from all of those different fields and the, the amount of major endorsements I've received. I have 28 major endorsements from former presidents to current state senators to the vindicator from labor. I have business and I have service. I am the only candidate with an actual service endorsement from the Ohio Association of Professional Firefighters. I have both of the major education endorsements and it's because of that experience that I have the education that I have and the careers that I've had that I'm able to to put all of those together to make the best informed decisions for the people of this district.